Hello, welcome to the world of Word. Coming up, another word in your attic. And if you enjoy this, visit our Patreon to find out more about our exclusives and our general work of national importance. The link is in the notes below. And now, on with the show. Word in your attic. A Zoom with a view. <laughs> okay, well, uh, welcome to another word in your attic. I have to say, it's such a delight to finally catch up with Joe Kendall. We've been, ever since this bloody war started, Mark and I have been saying regularly, we've got to get Joe. She like Joe will have an attic. She'll have good stuff. Joe will have good yeah. stuff. <laughs> But She's tracking, good value. <laughs> tracking you down has been somewhat difficult, Joe. Where do yeah. we find you now? Uh, I'm in my flat in Finsley Park, um, which I've been avoiding because London has been uh, a little bit uh, tense and aggravated since lockdown. Well, actually, not since lockdown. First six weeks were really brilliant, actually, if you wanted to get away from people and live in a 28 days later kind of scenario. But... Um, since you know uh, people have been starting to get a bit sort of uh, agitated and you know it's a general mood actually <laughs> throughout the country of kind of agitation dissatisfaction and certain things like that and uh, yeah london's been the, the sub the suburbs or the zone two and beyond has been a little bit um sort of tense so uh, i actually legged it i legged it to the countryside i, w I went to Hampshire nice. and i've had country walks on my doorstep uh, oh, and a bit of peace and quiet and um yeah social distancing very important and there people cross the road to get away from you here people cross the road to get to you so, uh, <laughs> yes it's it's, it's, uh, it's I'm, it? I'm back i'm back partly for you and partly for, for a couple of other reasons so right. yeah and it's actually really nice to have well, gone very to honored my so stuff you, on, to yeah. see your stuff it's still there it's, 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 it's a proper here. my flatmate well, hasn't sold it no I, absolutely and so you've clearly you, have you always accumulated a lot of stuff is that yeah fair to I've, say? I think I, I think I've, I've um, inherited that gene from my mum um uh, weirdly enough a few years ago a friend of mine on Facebook he started um uh, a little uh, thing called my dad's record collection and I think it's usual for maybe uh, the, the males to be having a, a record collection my record collection is my mum it comes from my mum my mum had the record collection my dad had like four singles and they're all by Petula Clark uh, <laughs> or, or Kenny Ball or Kenny Ball and his jazz Kenny Ball's jazz jazz like they're all yeah. on pie yeah. Yeah. So what, did you, what did your mum have what sort of stuff oh, my mum had a real uh, eclectic um, uh, selection um, starting with sort of musicals and musical theatre, going into light classical, and then Peggy Lee, and then going into a bit of um, uh, Carly Simon and Linda Ronstadt, loads of Beatles. Um, my, my parents are a bit older than my, my um, friends' parents, so for them, the 60s sort of passed them by. They thought that the Rolling Stones were like a novelty act, and they don't know anything <laughs> about Jimi Hendrix or anything like that. But the Beatles, um, permeates their lives, you know, because the Beatles um, sort of is such a, a, a soundtrack to everyone's life, you know, yeah, whether you're tiny yeah. or you're a grand or whatever, you know. So they always like the Beatles, and so they never censored any of the Beatles stuff. So I got to hear, you know, all the weird like White Album when we're on holiday. We'd be listening to that in the car, as well as Saturday Night Fever and things like that. Right. Oh, I love the idea that people would censor those tracks. You mean you wouldn't play them? Well, to children? why don't you do it in the road? Perhaps, oh yes. You know? Yeah. No. Fair yeah, point. Never thought of that. Good point. Yeah. yeah. Fair point. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, and also some some things, yeah, some things are a bit ripe, ripe aren't they? So, yeah, um, yeah so, so, yeah, so they, they didn't really, didn't, they probably just go, oh, I don't like that one so much. I mean, I remember my dad, um, uh, God, you know, he had, because um, my dad's an engineer, so he's into anything tech. And that is still the case now. He can just look at something and go, yeah, I know how that works. He's started up things, that, you know, in, in his mid-80s. You know, he's got his iPad going. He knows more about his iPad than I know about anything else. Um, but he would uh, take records from the library uh, on a Marconi phone, um, which was um, a portable uh, record player that had a lid that split in the middle. He took the, the sides off and it became speakers. Two speakers, right. stereo speakers. Yeah. I remember those. Yeah. You put one on, exactly, one on yeah. the side. It, had a, it was stacking as well and it had um, uh, sort of 16 up to um, seven, up to 78 as well for, for revolutions. But yeah, he'd have a little tape recorder with a little microphone on it, a little Boots C, um, C90s, and he would tape 
all the records that you got from the library, including the Beatles and stuff, uh, on this little thing. So it wasn't quite in stereo, should we say. Um, but it was innovative and, you know, we had this library of stuff. Oh, I wonder where that is. I'll have to try and find it. That'll be in my ne next time in my mum and dad's attic. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. yeah, that'd yeah. be good. That's so what, nice. have, what have you got to show us? Because you've well, obviously got a lot of swag there. I've got some swag, yeah. But I thought that it seems to be a tradition that people are picking out their first album that they bought with their own money. Yeah, so no. I'm going to reveal yellow. Uh, it's a yellow again. Oh, you, and again, this ELO, is spooky. Number of times ELO has come up. Incredible. We did this the other day with, uh, well, not quite the same thing. We were talking to David Mitchell, the, the you know, the best-selling author, not the yeah. TV pundit and so forth. Uh, and uh, didn't he, wasn't his first record an ELO record as well? It was well, ELO. Well, so many people. Because, and, uh, partly because it's very familiar. If you've grown up with the Beatles, it's a sort of extension of what the Beatles are all about. It's, it's not too challenging if you're quite young. And, when you know, I'm on Zoom, I can use all the, has anyone been using the emot emoticons? Oh, there you go. Oh, oh it's good. And also, yeah, and, I, and just in case you do need me to shut up, and I can. <laughs> That's this. fantastic. Oh, yeah. So this, this is, is something first. I've got. I've probably got this when I was about nine. I still think it's, a, it's such a brilliant collection. You know, I mean, uh, because again, the grounding of having Beatles and classical, and here it is, along with Queen. You know, this is this is the band. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is a little bit I had a little bit of a disaster when I was about 16 and I was still living at home we'd gone on holiday and the water tank burst in the roof and it was above my record collection I only had about oh, 100 oh. records at the time or something but it went a bit wavy some records went completely papier mache so this is this is a survivor as well yeah, it still plays That's yeah great. it still plays yeah well yeah. i have to say that like many of my records when i was younger i didn't treat them very well it's got fingerprints it's got all sorts of over it but you know, um, that, that's life. They were look at they, this they, cover as well. I mean, they it's weren't pre preserved. Yeah, <laughs> but look at this cover. It's you know they actually made that. They didn't have Photoshop. They made this medal, and I wished I had this medal. Maybe not this size, quite big. Oh but, right, but, yes, of course. But I really, really wanted this. This you know, I wanted to buy this because I love a bit of merchandise. Which right, might be something yeah. else. Okay, that's very good. Have you got any merchandise there? What's I've your got a little bit of merchandise, yeah. Because, what's your t-shirt um, say? Yeah, what's the, what's the legend on your... I want to the merchandise. No pining for the fjords! Oh, yeah. of course! There we go. Oh, very oh, good. Oh, yeah. When Monty Python the parrot. Um, re reunited, yeah, Norwegian yeah. Blue. Uh, when Monty Python reunited, I was lucky enough to get a ticket, bought, bought a ticket to go to see them, and um, Terry Jones was ill. But um, as you know, um, he had uh, uh, Alzheimer's, and uh, but it was still absolutely fantastic. And also, one of the sketches which you can't go wrong with, especially if you're Terry Jones and maybe not so rec uh, recognizing your lines and things, is the spam spam song spam sketch. It's all written on the board anyway, so right. you know. But yeah, so that's a, that's a, a little piece of of merch that I have there. Uh, lockdown has meant that I have been investing in discogs and some some merch as well. But oh, I right. found some other things that I've got here. Go so on. one of the things that I rediscovered during lockdown, much to my neighbour's annoyance, is um, stylophone. Oh, oh my god! Right. Yes, is that an original one? Yeah. No, they've got a fiftieth anniversary one, and it's actually a little bit easier to to work than the old one. The old ones, in a way, um, not much, not, not much difference between this and the old ones, except it comes with a, a battery normally. But as championed by David Bowie, surely. Yeah, definitely. So the thing is that Stylophone have now branched out, and they've got some other um, enormous. They're doing like proper synthesizers with like pots and things too. So they're making. <laughs> strides the thing is they're still a novelty in this country but in america people buy them up and they use them on uh, records all the time so you know but anyway um i'm not particularly musical and yet i have a variety of things around me that i try to make music with my poor neighbors i've been doing um 21st century schizoid man on this uh, and i'm not going to do it now I'm not going to do it now because another thing, another feature you've got with the new stylophone is you can stick in your uh, a music player and it will play through it, so you can play along to it. And you know, so Kate Bush, Queens and Stylophone. Oh Stanley, really? Take the really your stylophone. Yeah, that's so, brilliant. So a bit of my stylophone. And then you've chosen 21st century Skidside Man, a really easy one to start yes. with. You know. Yeah, no, absolutely. Not a I challenge thought, at all. I thought go hard or go home. You know, um, <laughs> give me some recipes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not much rock and roll in here, but there is a re- recipe for meatloaf. So, you know, <laughs> um, so I never knew that Dick Emery was uh, could take his brand into the cooking area. Who Would did? It? Who did? Who did? <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I don't know if you've been looking at Rough Trade books. Rough Trade books have been doing these great sort of slim volumes. Oh no, I haven't seen this. This is Go about on. Steam Down, which is a collective in Deptford, and it's sort of they've been going for a few years some sort of superstar cosmic jazzers coming through so that was a good little read and then right. i've also been getting into so they're like little magazines are they is that yeah some of them are but some of them are a bit bigger um is that got... what we what we called a bookazine wouldn't it yeah, in some yeah well uh, perhaps yeah or an, or a, a, a super novella perhaps <laughs> um but um I, i've also got one that will Hodg- hodgkinson's just done about um the windmill in brixton called roof dog if anyone's been to the to the women in Brixton, they'll recognise it because there was a, a, at least one dog living on the roof. I think that one's gone. I think there's a new dog that lives on the roof that barks at you to welcome you, obviously, when you come. Uh, and then <laughs> Cold War Steve, you know, the, the um, yes, viral sensation. And it's also signed by, by Steve, which is lovely. So this is the early years when it was literally just the, the Cold War photographs and uh, Phil Mitchell, uh, um, also known as Steve McFadden from EastEnders, uh, photoshopped into them. So these are marvellous little reads right. because I was watching um, Ian Rankin, who I know a little bit, and you spoke to him just yeah, recently, yeah. and he was saying how it's very difficult at the moment to knuckle down to reading, and I absolutely agree with that. I haven't been really able to concentrate. I know, on he's it. brilliant. He said something like, you start reading and you just think, what's the point? That's right. Yeah, exactly. Just, yeah, what is the point? I know. <laughs> Are we going to still be here in like, you know, three, three yeah. months? Anyway. I have to say, in my own defence, I'm reading like a mad thing. Are you? Absolutely. Oh, wow. Flying through books. Oh, wow. Well, well we talked to Paul Denoy, our old pal from Mojo and Word and stuff, and he was reading uh, War and Peace, Dave, wasn't he? He thought, <laughs> like, this is the time to do it. If there's, if there's, if there's ever well, a time. I read no that excuse. a couple of years ago because I thought this is coming. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm prepared for it. things might fall on me when I do this. Go but, on. Um, I've got... Sid Smith. Oh. oh, yeah. Oh, what? They, they King Crimson. 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 Oh, there you go. Yeah, of course. And I know you talked to Sid recently. No, we had yeah, Sid we as did. a guest. Yeah, yeah. So, so I've got that to look, to look forward to. Right. <laughs> Again, I hope you've been enjoying the... I hope you've been enjoying Robert Fripp and Toya's fantastic... Uh, um, Very much so. YouTubes from their garden. They're amazing. It's Sunday lunchtime. Sunday lunch. Yeah, yeah, the dances. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Re- really, really good. Uh, on the, on the Cold War Steve tip again, I got this jigsaw, Cold War Steve jigsaw puzzle, oh, mainly nice. because it's got sparks on oh. it, but this is all good stuff. It's called Harold, and it's got Harold, Harold Bishop from Neighbours. This is Happy Times, so a thousand pieces of this. But I, also, I put this on Twitter saying, oh, I've just bought this because it's got sparks in it, and Ian Rankin went, uh, 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 I'm in it too, so Ian's... Oh, I see. All Terrific. fun, nice people, you know, oh, the good great. stuff is in this jigsaw. Yeah, yeah. What am I doing? It's good to know that all these little viral sensations are doing well out of selling traditional merchandise. Oh, I know. I know. Jigsaws I... are back. <laughs> jigsaws. <laughs> who, who'd ever have imagined <laughs> said that 10 years ago? Do you know the future will be? Jigsaws. I know. We did, we did Mark that? Billingham, the crime writer. Mark Billingham spent most of the long time <laughs> just doing Beatles album covers in jigsaws. Couldn't have been happier. Lovely. Yeah. And... So another book that I've just bought that I am going to oh, read. Oh yeah, that's signed. So this yeah. is good. this is on a uh, white rabbit, ra- white rabbit. Um, this would be good to see another side of um, the talking heads. Talking heads, because you know, we yes. do tend to hear from maybe one person quite a lot. So I'm looking yeah, to Jerry that. Harrison, he'll never shut up, will he? <laughs> <laughs> so that arrived yesterday. Um, I just thought I'd want to show you a random Steve yeah. Davis photo that's signed because Who's he's that? one of Steve our prog da- friends. Oh, right. Interesting Steve. Yeah. And I'm also oh, a major prog fan. Major so, prog fan. But before that... Who was I his favourite group? Was it Camel? There was one group we always magma. went on about, wasn't it? Magma. 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 Sorry, Magma. Magma, that's right. Magma. He paid for them to come over at least once. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, you know, really supportive of prog, as you uh, know, because you both... 
both appeared in the pages yeah, of Yeah, yeah. In fact, you know, I recognise all those records. You do. You came and photographed these records for Prog. Yeah, so that was really good. But yeah, Steve, Steve's absolutely brilliant. Um, he's got a, a show, um, the interest, interesting, because he's Steve, interesting David, so it's the interesting alternative. So he has the alternative show. But for some reason, I've, I've got possession of this and it makes me smile when I see it. So, Very good. Uh, but also, there was a, a documentary on BBC recently and I've been absolutely inhaling documentary it's been I've been hoovering them up and it was about um, British um, jazz funk uh, sadly he wasn't in it although he's a champion also jazz funk he's got a massive collection of um, jazz funk records he had like you know when he first won a lot of, um, earned a lot of money through snooker he spent it all on records he spent a lot of uh, disco jazz funk that's, yeah, yeah. That, was his, that was his uh, as well as prog had come before that and then he came very much back to it now. And he's in a band, The Utopia Strong, with Carvers from Gong. Going to bring up a Gong thing in a sec. Well. <laughs> um, I just thought you might like to see a picture of Ian Ogilvie that was signed oh. um, oh. with his horse. Why um, not? I found that, you know, because I saw went to the cinema museum where they were doing Witchfinder General and he did a talk, which was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Joe, Joe, is there anything you're not interested in? No, I like, <laughs> like everything. I love the idea of that. I just thought you might really... like to see a picture of. <laughs> that's right. that's really, really, really uh, random. I think never had, this is the widest variety we've ever had, Joe. It is delightful. Hang on, sleep. let me just do. It really uh, is. Can I, uh, I'm not going to applaud myself, but excellent. Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> so, uh, talking about, I like to go. I, I watched. Um, I know. I know. Polly Birkbeck. Um, well, yeah. I, I watched. I watched her episode with you. I really, really enjoyed that. Oh my god! Right. You know, getting in deep with her collection. How she likes to. Well, I haven't got David Bowie's um, cigarette, unfortunately. No. Uh, I haven't got anything as exciting as that, but I do. I don't mind going and asking people for something to be signed. It started quite early on. I had an autograph book that my parents encouraged when I was younger, and that was generally my teachers. <laughs> and maybe I don't know. So, uh, oh, Tony Hart. Tony Hart came to my school, so you know, got, got things like Tony Hart. But uh, I remember uh, going to Tower Records, and I really missed Tower Records in Piccadilly because I absolutely loved it. And um, my mum had got a damned poster signed for me about two weeks previous to this. And I saw Nigel Kennedy, again, talking about the classical thing, Nigel Kennedy was doing a signing. He just, he just had a, um, a new recording of the Four Seasons, Valdi's Four Seasons um, out. So I thought, oh, I'll go along and I'll get something signed. But we already had a copy of the Four Seasons by like Deutsche Grammophon or something. Yeah, so I yeah. thought I won't buy that. I'll buy a Sugar Cubes record and I'll get him to sign that instead. <laughs> so I queued up, right, and uh, got to the front and uh, I said, I haven't bought your record. And he went, I wouldn't either. And then I said, will you sign that? <laughs> will you sign this? And he went, oh, Sugar Cubes. Oh, I like, I like, I like Bjork. And um, then he said... Uh, Oh, um, I like her because she's really um, sort of uh, uh, unique and ballsy. And oh, she took a shit on stage, and and it was blah 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 blah. And his people would horrify, just kind of like, why is he talking like this? But then they all kind of went nervously. <laughs> yeah, they would do. They would do. <laughs> yeah. I saw him at the Royal Albert Hall, and it was with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra. And he said he introduced them as these these animals, these cats. <laughs> and, uh, and the crazy bunch, you know, they're all slightly embarrassed by it. But, you yeah, know, you've I know. got to admire them. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, he, he's pretty unique himself. So anyway, he said to me, what shall I, how shall I sign it? So I said, oh, can you sign it to my mum? So he wrote, to my mum, classic, to <laughs> my mum, Joe's, hello mum. Nigel Kennedy. And I never right. gave it to her. Hooray! Yeah, well, you yeah, wouldn't do, wouldn't you? Why would no, you? Wouldn't you wouldn't give her a Sugar Cubes no, record no. signed by Nigel Kennedy. I, know, Lee... I, I don't think anybody else in the world has that, to be honest. No, that's, it, that's a unique <laughs> artifact. That's, that's better than a David Bowie cigarette. Because there are probably loads of people who've got David Bowie cigarettes. Yeah. So it's just we haven't met one of them. Or Keith Richards Either. cigarettes or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. So, so something else I've been doing during lockdown is, um, you know, many years ago, going back about 30 years ago, I was an indie DJ and I used to DJ at the Mean Fiddler and the Powerhouse and Subterranea and all that kind of thing. I, this was with my meagre record collection. I remember the Mean Fiddler put an advert in Time Out and they said, DJs wanted, must have own collection. I applied. I went up and chatted to a lady called Alison 
and I'd be about 18, 19. And she said, yeah, that's fine. Come in and DJ around bands that are already playing and they could be new bands or they might be established bands, or whatever. So I started doing that. I got 25 quid a night. I had to travel from um, Thamesmead to Harlesden though, uh, most, most times. But you know, it was my training wheels. I wanted to, to do that. Weirdly enough, when I DJed there on New Year, I can't remember what year, that would be 1990 or something, Fraser was also, Fraser Lurie was also DJing in another uh, part of the building. He was DJing really? the main place, but we, we wow. hadn't met. So that, that, that's a, a, an odd little... There's it a few was meant to be. Yeah, there's yeah, a few yeah. times we cross paths, actually. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so um, after a f about a year or so of doing this, I was kind of talent spotted and asked if I could um, uh, go and DJ at the venue in, in New Cross, which had a really great indie night. Or well, it's starting to have a really great indie night on Saturday nights. And I found a little flyer. This is a, this is a, um, a, a kind of snapshot of the time, 1990. Uh, so on Fridays, Jonathan and Nico, who used to do the Camden Palace, they do their club night. And on Saturdays, it's me and Alison who did a million rubber bands uh, uh, club in um, Deptford, Albany, the Albany in Deptford. And uh, these are the kind of bands that were playing. Ocean Colours in the field. Field boys. And the Afghan wigs. Of yeah, so we had the Afghan wigs on a Saturday night. <laughs> Field what mice, are none more indie than the field mice, don't you think? I know, and heavily... That era of the field mice, the corn dollies, those incredibly yeah. kind of pastoral, <laughs> gentle groups. Absolutely. It's, it was um, it was all bands finished by 11pm, club till 2, £3.50 until 10.30 with this leaflet. So oh, right. I, I get, me and Alison get a little mention on the back there. Oh, uh, well, very good. Nice. Yeah. Jonathan Nico there. Very good. That's yeah. great. Oh, actually, Leatherface, wow, I used to love three pound fifty. Three pounds. So, for these, and this is, and then I found some gigs from around that time that I would have also been going to. This is the only time I actually bought a, a gig, a, bought a ticket off a of tout, and that was Sonic Youth right. at, the, at the Academy. What uh, did you pay for it? Can you remember? That was a tenner because we waited until the band were on stage and then we got it just for. for um, <laughs> I yeah. love that from the very rare occasions I've done that. You just watch the money <laughs> falling away. And that terrible tension. How many songs Thank can you bear to miss? And eventually they're just going to give it to you, aren't they? Because we <laughs> nothing. Because they want to go home. Yeah. They want to go yeah, home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Cocteau Twins. Uh, nice. Brixton. Uh, bit of Cocteau's there. Can't remember who the special guests were. I, I, I drank a lot of Newcastle Brown in those days. So I oh, really? can't even remember going to these gigs. Um, uh, and then Deck and Dance as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bit of that going on. That's at the Old Town and Country. <coughs> before it became the Forum. Um, and then Lemonheads as well. 1991 uh, at the Astoria. Much missed yeah. Astoria. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely loved that venue, and I went to it probably more than any other venue. Well, I was briefly at Select Magazine. Uh, 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 is it Evan Dando? It was, uh, yeah, just cast an extraordinary spell over all the women readers, all the girl readers, oh, and all the girl members of staff. There was something about it, wasn't it? <laughs> definitely, definitely. And then a bit of PJ Harvey as well. So uh, she rose really quickly, actually, because Alison and I DJed uh, a kind of railway arch in... Um, London Bridge which was called Happy Jacks and it was um, a two pure party there was um, um, let me think who else was playing Quick Space um, or Faith Healers um, so yeah so it was a few, a few things but yeah so we saw PJ Harvey just go whoosh. so that's a little snapshot of that time and after that I became a promoter and I promoted the Dome in Tufnell Park for about two and a half years and I thought that you might like to see some of the entries that are in my demo book because I get on. hundreds and hundreds of demos uh, a month. So, um, you know, I, I can't say the problem was that with the dome, we didn't have any money, so I couldn't pay for any artists through agencies. It was very, very rare that I could book someone through an agency. Although I did manage to get pulp on a Friday night for 125 quid. Um, and um, I did some things like Eat and Levitation, um, Ostrich Tentacles. And on my birthday, I had Terminal Cheesecake and Shock Eddie Peters play. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anyway, the, the book is sort of about 90, 91, 90. Well, you shouldn't have. <laughs> Terminal <laughs> Cheesecake. That's oh, yeah. Brilliant. So the, so the book, this is kind of like, this is how it starts. This is when I took it over from Patrick. And he's, it starts as it means to go on with um, 
you know, classic indie band names here, like the Clitoris All Sorts. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, occasionally something pops up where you kind of go, oh, they could have been the, the occasional tables. You know, I can be selling these names on now um, because they're not being used anymore. Um, I mean, you must have had thousands of demos yourself. Was there, was, there anyone, was there anyone that you got a demo stage that you thought they're terrible? And oh, then they but the name everything. should live on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Got the auteurs here, the auteurs that's in... Um, March 1992, um, someone has, it's Patrick has put this young marble giants, he's called them, folky rock. I would say, so you're right, this is your kind of reviews book of everything that comes in. You go, this sounds a bit like so and so. So everything, everything's likened to something else, presumably. We try, we do try with our limited knowledge and space. We've got <laughs> Gretchen Hoffner here, uh, Huggy Bear. So Huggy Bear, for some reason, we've done a little design around it and little hmm, and gone Sonic Youth, Noisy, Glammy. So yeah. um, we would go back to them. We did book them a couple of times, actually. But yeah, it's sort of, then it starts to just sort of go, oh, wow, so much stuff, so much, so much stuff. But really, really, really fun times. Um, Blythe Power, who seem to go on forever. Uh, st I think they're still playing now. Um, some things you go, oh, was that Oasis? No, it's another Oasis. So uh, City Blue Side are here. We call, and I, I called them Throwing Muses Pixies as a reference, you know. So I think I might have known some some stuff. So, yeah, it's uh, Curious Oyster. What happened to them? Uh, you know. See, that comes uh, straight out of 1968, that really, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, a, yeah. It's timeless. Sausage, sausage Thing. Anybody remember Sausage Thing? Uh, I, I don't. Know. I don't. See, you know, the, the, the test of, of this is, would you want to have this on a T-shirt? I might want sausage thing on a T-shirt. Um, <laughs> these animal men are here. Then, you know, I get into things like, um, I also used to go band of the week or demo of the week and things like that. None of these have survived. You know, none of these people have survived. I'll tell you the, the funny thing about names, though. If you look at all the, all, the, all, all the thinking about names that went into those all those bands, you know, and uh, many of whom didn't make it, Oasis did, and that yeah. is the worst name it's the, in the it's history of popular music. Absolutely awful. Name. It's yeah. probably even worse than the Beatles. It, I, I think, think it the is. Beatles is a bad, the Beatles is a bad name, you know. It is the worst. It's, it's a terrible name. Worst name. Yeah, exactly. But Oasis is just kind of, yeah. Well, we, I mean, there was a group, another group called Oasis, wasn't there? At the same time, was it Julian Lloyd Webber and Mary Hopkin or something like that? Yeah, that's I right. Was, yeah. I think it was. It's it, like there's a few Nirvanas. It was such a bland name. Yeah, you know, well, they, should have been, they should have been Cowpuncher, you know, that's... Well, standard. absolutely, I that couldn't... Understand. Fine. I and couldn't I remember Cowpuncher being really yeah. great because Cowpuncher had a washing machine they used as an amp for their electric banjo, of course. Oh, well, you know. very good. Well, uh, it's, it's, and, and I've got this And Oasis thing. actually have named themselves after the soft drink, didn't they? Which was even worse. It wasn't even some no. mystical thing. Yeah, that's no. what they claimed. Somebody was just drinking a can of Oasis, whatever that'll do. That is boring. That's boring. That's appalling, isn't it? I know. Yeah. Uh, got one here, Future Primitive, and I go, now called Bush. So does everyone remember Bush? You know, Gavin Rosdale, oh, right, kind of got yeah. quite big. And at the time, and I think they might still be managed by Dave Durrell, the uh, dance DJ. So Dave, I bumped into him and he said, oh, I've got this rock band. And I'm like, yeah, you've got a rock band. And he's like, yeah. And they got quite big. So, yeah. So Dave's Peter, wife taught the lead singer at school. Yeah, so there we are. What? yeah Gavin Rosdale. Gavin Rosdale taught yeah, she told him. Um, yeah, yeah. When, he, when he was about He's done quite eight. well for himself. <laughs> well, who did yeah. he marry? Gwen Stefani. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Not, uh, <laughs> you, you are interested in everything, Joe. You know, tell us about those. I want to say that you've got ukuleles behind you. Yeah, because this is really in tribute to, to Sylvie Simmons. So, Sylvie. I, a friend of mine had, had decided to learn the ukulele, so I went along and learned the. Well, I bought a ukulele from um, uh, Alan's guitar shop, 
and uh, it was at the Cecil Sharp House. There was a, there was a, a communion at the, at the Cecil Sharp House. I was absolutely, I, I'd never played it before, but by the end of it, I played two chords. I could do Miss, Miss Dynamite, you know. So you learn something. And then um, somehow I got talking to, to Sylvie, because we worked in the, in, the same, in the same building, and she said that she was learning ukulele. So I went along with her to a session at the George, which is that pub next to the Astoria, where it's normally hair, hair metalers would go in there. But on a Wednesday, they'd have ukulele nights. And uh, me and her went down. And, uh, yeah, that was when I had... I bought, I bought this. Now it looks more rock than, than 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 it should do because obviously I had access for working at Kerrang and access to lots and lots of brilliant stickers and things. Right, right. So you know, I kind of I've been more into decorating it than to actually practicing it. But I was delighted to see that uh, Sylvie just absolutely flew. She had a natural talent. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can I can do you know a Blitzkrieg bop or possibly a bit of bad moon rising things with three chords on it everything sounds brilliant on a ukulele but then i couldn't help even though i can't play this properly i couldn't help but buy a blooming flying it's a flying v, v. my yeah. son's got exactly the same one <laughs> really <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly get it out i yeah, bought it from them. a little uke shop in uh, in, in the east end it's brilliant it's really it's really, really really tinny i mean i'm not going to play it now but you know I got the black one with the white thing, so you know, of course it That's goes. That's great. I look like Kerry King from Slayer, obviously. <laughs> so, yeah, look at that. I mean, wow. sorry, I just go wow. <laughs> and I mean, it sounds awful, but I mean, I, I feel I feel sorry for you, Mark, actually, to have this in your house and someone like plucking like it, it isn't tuned or anything. He never played it very much, actually. I think he just liked the idea of it. Something yeah, you just exactly, show to people. Exactly. It looks better than it sounds. It's a really fun, cool idea. So that's my ukulele. You might also see my wizard hat stash here because oh, I'm okay. looking for prog. Stash, I like the word stash, indicating there's lots more, there's more than one wizard hat. Oh, oh there are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course, because with this, well, with this, I'm a wizard. I mean, I'm a normal wizard, right? With this, yeah. Bill Bailey's worn this because um, he is also a wizard. Uh, but with this, I'm a pot-headed pixie. If I pop this on, I'm definitely in Gong. I just oh yeah, you are a on. member of Gong. So, we can't yeah. see the summit. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I know well, the summit at the moment. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> tremendously cute so i need i need a i need a propeller so if anybody can source me a propeller you know they've got those caps that 1950s kids used to wear with the propeller on the oh team. yes of yes course. Anyway, i don't know why they would have those does it help their brain work or something <laughs> so, anyway, so, so there's a there's a bit of that uh i also found this leading on from uh this where as you quite rightly said david this is probably the start of me reviewing stuff yeah, yeah. whether i knew what i was talking about or not at some point i compare someone to i think it might be something like the smith severed heads and elvis costello and the attractions <laughs> all at once so uh so that that gives you some insight i was also making i was, I was, I was also got all my old flyers and things in here as well that i used to put together oh and a letter from DJ that says, can you tell me whether you have any long playing records, LP records by Craftwork, Tangerine Dream, Mike Oldfield, Steve Hackett, Genesis, Rick Wakeman, Vangelis, and also the band called Yes. Strange name, but that's what they're called on vinyl records only. Will you be playing them? <laughs> Thanks. Fan letter. It's very immediate feedback, isn't it? That? It's very yeah. old world. Oh yeah, yeah. No, don't just no. come up and ask for a request, right? It's a letter. No, no, no. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. I love the way they have to explain who yes are, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think we've heard of yes. Yes. Do we know yes? Strange name, oh, but you know, that's right. definitely you know yes, because David, you told me that story about when you and your your friends were flat sharing in Wood Green and you'd have the light show going to We did. Uh, Yours is no disgrace. Yours is no disgrace, yeah. Because we were so impressed by uh, going, we don't see LS, we don't see Yes at the LSE at the time the Yes album came out. And they played Yours is no disgrace. And they had, get this, lighting. And this was kind Strange. of the end. So this is 1970, 71. And so this is the early days of proper lighting, really, of gig specific lighting. And they flashed it on and off to the du, 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 du. And we just thought that was so fantastic. And we went home and, uh, and my job was to go and stand by the one light switch in the room while yours is no surprise played, turning it on and off. <laughs> it, 
That is the most we made our own <laughs> entertainment in those days story I can possibly. Wonderful. Since, so since you've told me that, I've been doing it myself. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> don't, 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 you know, fuse your, uh, yeah, don't, don't blow your electricity. <laughs> <coughs> There's something else I found was the first time that I was in print, and this is oh, the, it's the always good. Fanzine. So my friend Johnny Rocket put this together. As you can see, it's free, and it's a mix of culture, arts, and politics, and it is completely unsubbed. <laughs> um, and I used to write my uh, reviews uh, on like an envelope. I didn't have a computer, and then I'd have to give them to Johnny and Lisa, who did the magazine. And and in this one, actually, I review Plush. This is the number one. I review Plush, China Drum, uh, that. Glue, the flavor, quick space super sport, pink cross, and minxus, and the pastels. So, again, a snapshot of the time. Yeah, and yeah. I have to say, they're not too bad. I don't think I've really, I don't think I've really improved. Is it, is it under your real name? No, it's under Mint Cake. Oh, uh, you see, Kendall Mint so Cake. you didn't Mint see cake. your name in print then. <laughs> no, I didn't because the next time I then changed my name. Don't you regret that? No, you see, yeah. that's my the first. Point. I don't know. Just be real. What was that? What? I think Mark frozen briefly. Oh, he has. Yeah. It was a little <laughs> freeze. We had a freeze. Sorry. <laughs> Go on. What did you? What did you say? Carry you're on. Fit, you're fit. We're, I'm gonna. We're gonna do that question again because Alex can edit that point. Uh, so what were you saying, Mark? Your first stuff was was under what I name? Said, yeah, my first name was Candice Be Real, which is pathetic, isn't it? Why would you do that? Because what you want to do is see your own name in print. I regret well, it immediately. I, just, I didn't know how, how, where it was going to take me, to be honest. And so I thought, oh, mint cake's quite fun. And then the next issue, for some reason, well, actually, I know the reason. I think it might be the same bloke wrote in to, again or gave us a letter again. I was under the name uh, Headley Shrimp. Uh, and, and see, then I, was the see I, think, I think it's a serious point, this, you know, because your first, your first time seeing your genuine name in print is a profoundly important thing. And you I want really, to show your parents that you're actually getting well, somewhere. I read, some the, I read the thing recently where, where about Charles Dickens recorded um, his, his reaction to seeing his name in print for the first time and he wrote something, Parliamentary Report, I think it was. And he, he went round to the magazine's office and got an early copy. And he went out into the, into the street and looked at his name. And then he had to duck out of the street into a little alleyway because he couldn't bear to see pe for people to see his eyes misted with pride and embarrassment at the same time. Oh. I thought, I thought that's so good. It's that's so Charles accurate. Bloody Dickens. You yeah. know? Wow, that and, is lovely. And actually, and he swung on lampposts all the way home. <laughs> but, but it's a kind of. It's, it, you feel vulnerable at the same time, don't you? You think, oh, my God, I've written... Oh, my God, they've printed yeah, I'm it. I'm responsible for this. I'm yeah. responsible for that. If there's that a mistake, is, it's my fault. That's the weird I know, thing, I know. Yeah, I thought... So, yeah, so you're right. I, I hid behind different names. There was another... Was several names as well. And then when, actually, when I did my first review proper for Kerrang, um, my, I said to my editor, because I, I was actually covering the gig for him, <laughs> didn't make it so I said to my editor oh I think I might put this under a pseudonym and he said really do you think so he said don't you want to see your name you know this could be the start of other stuff because uh, I was an editorial assistant at the time and I kind of went oh oh okay so I put, put my real name and then yeah you're right you have to stand by it. you know you have to put the door then so it's kind of like, oh god and actually it probably makes you take it more seriously oh you go, it does now I don't think I've ever written anything under a pseudonym when I think about it, I don't think I ever, ever have. Have you, dreamt, have you dreamt of having a pseudonym? Did you have a punk name? No, I was too old to have a punk name. <laughs> I can, that Very would flattering be... of you to ask. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we, still, we still make up punk names, even though we've, we've never done it. And I call myself Joe Zero after Gong, you know, Joe Zero, the, the, the hero zero, zero hero kind of thing. So, yeah. But, um, I've got a few more uh, bits yeah. of merch to show you. Go on, go on, go on. Right. I'm actually drinking from my Black Sabbath cup at the moment. Oh, Black of course. Sabbath exhibition last year was really, really great. Okay. So um, I think, what, well, first of all, actually, I also wanted to say to you, thank you so much for producing Smash Hits, because I did find this when I was... Oh, 
when I was oh, there. Right. When I was looking at it. But it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a massive it's poster. It's got Nick Cable on one side. Oh, like, Nick Cable! Who I did, who I did like, I did like Hair 100, but I really, really like the jam. So, so thank you so much for having, for making this, there you go, that's a poly. Um, so that must have been when you were editing, Mark. I don't remember a Nick Hayward poster. What your year is it? Oh, God, I don't know. Will it say it on there? But it'd be sort of around about 81. Hold it up again. It'd be a bit, a bit later, but anyway, go on. Yeah. It doesn't oh. matter. It doesn't matter. I was, I just, Mark and I went to see Hayward 100 at, their, at the absolute peak of their uh, scream mania. They were fantastic. They were really good. They were really good. Nick Hayward came on, I can remember now, with a kind of... Uh, with a kind of lemon yellow cardi over his shoulders. Do you remember that day? And at one point reappeared with a little, um, with a kind of a, a life belt, you know, a, a, that you, as such yeah. as one would throw to a drowning sailor. God oh. knows why. <laughs> they were terrific. Brilliant. The thing is, I, I got to speak to Nick for prog because um, every, any, t- any time a weird kind of email comes you know press release comes my way i'll just go that's not prog but is it i so i say oh this person knows anything about prog let us know because we have a um a column called um uh, my prog hero so we couldn't we can't write about the person because they're not making prog music but we can talk about them uh, if they're bigging up someone proggy so you know i've t- talked to jella biafra about uh, hawkwind he said no there'd be no dead kennedys without hawkwind uh, and uh, nick hayward said that he loved genesis and that he uses all used all the touch from atmospheric touches and sound effects and sort of uh, telling stories from Genesis to put into Haircut 100. To the first Mark, episode. Mark, you've got a story about Nick Hayward, haven't you? At this point. Well, do you mean the time I went to interview him at the at the? Uh, no, the I meant I, I, I meant I meant the time he came to see you. Oh Lord, yes, that's right. No, I I had a book out and um, yeah, I was, was doing a book signing after this thing. It was in Henley, I remember. And there was a guy in the queue, and I noticed that all the time when people joined the queue, he would move to the back. And if you're ever signing books, it's always fascinating to see who the last person in the queue is, because they're the person who wants to have a conversation with you. They're, they're not keen to just have a quick, you know, get, get up to sign charged. book. No, they're actually, they've got something to say. And I just didn't recognise him, actually. Weirdly, he looked very much like Eric Clapton did on the, on the kind of... Um, on the kind of uh, the, the the acoustic uh, album that he put out, with the same specs, unplugged, the same yeah, 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 unplugged, yeah. yeah. And uh, but it was so sweet, and he just at the end he said, "You don't recognise me, but I'm, I'm Nick Hayward, who, I, who was actually in the book, in fact." Oh. And we had a long conversation. It was very, and he was talking about Smash It, and how he loved it, and uh, what a difference it made to his career. And uh, we were thrilled. It was, it was lovely to see him. He what was a good bloke. He was a and I interviewed, I interviewed him when, when he was living in the, in the basement of the ski club of Great Britain with his parents. And uh, when he was at the top of his game, with screaming girls outside. It's fantastic. Oh, uh, yeah. he was a really, really lo- lo- lovely guy to chat to. Most unexpected, you know, you, you kind of go, I do, I do this with, with regularity because, you know, you just you don't ask, you don't get. And when I hear someone like that comes back and goes, yeah, I'll talk about such and such a thing and it'll be like what you know so great you know i get a great chat in and also i love the music at the time as well so but anyway thank thank you for that All so right. on to some some weird merch because i do like i buy it and sometimes i get sent it so i think it started with this uh iron maiden candle this is eddie the head done in candle form oh, <laughs> it's really good. lovely and i've not used it no, quite uh, right. iron maiden holdings limited so they're very big on their business yeah, so yeah. That was that I had that year. That's why they're still around after all this time. Very much so. Um, here we've got a bit of a collision. This is when I was at Kerrang and I got very into Weezer actually. And then Weezer did a, a collaboration with the Muppets. And also, <laughs> maybe enough, they took the Winger logo. So there's all sorts of stuff going on with Kermit, Weezer, Winger. Um, and it's just lovely because I love the Muppets too. So th- that's a, a marriage made in, in uh, heaven for me. So that's really lovely. <laughs> uh, moving on, stuff you can't buy anymore. I went to um, Liverpool uh, in the um, sort of early 90s, very, very early 90s, and they have a whole different raft of merchandise then to what they have now, including, you, you know, I'll never get this again, I slept with Ringo Starr knickers. <laughs> and I think they were the only ones left in the shop as well, which might say <laughs> something. Would they ever make, is that, you know, would they ever make a Beatles thong again? 
I, I, I think some lawyers would come after them if they were, if they were planning <laughs> to do that. Yeah, very, very much so. Um, so some friends of mine are called Kitten Pyramid. They made a Kitten Pyramid. Oh, very good. you got to do that. Very nice. Nice home, homemade plushie there. Um, <laughs> went to see Tantrum <laughs> Green at the uh, Union Chapel and was delighted to see that they were selling clocks. The Tangerine Dream clock. So it's always time for Tangerine Dream. So I've got it signed how, how much did you pay for a Tangerine Dream clock? Uh, tenner. Tenner. You would, wouldn't you? Uh, would you? I, I don't know. Well, you, clearly you would. No, that's fine. Yeah, I would. I would do that. So it's signed by... Uh, always what? Tangerine clock. Exactly. Yeah, it yeah. is, yeah. So, that, so there's that. Then... Zombies, love, love the zombies. I went to see on their last uh, gig, uh, Odyssey and Oracle, and I've got a little bit of a slip map. And I've got a mask coming as well, Odyssey and Oracle mask, because that's the thing at the moment. Obviously, lots of brands. So that has, has to go on your record, on your turntable. Yeah, it's nice, isn't oh, it? Oh, that's clever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> slightly, slightly, oh, actually, no, this makes sense. You have lots of promo items. So I was also really happy. I'm not gonna, never used it, and I wouldn't use it now, to get the Rolling Stones 40 Licks lip seal. Oh, really? Clever. <laughs> that's that's. You see, I, ne I never really hung on to any of that stuff. Mark and I even got rid of our reckless Eric bricks, didn't we? We had a reckless Eric brick. What? Yeah, and God knows why. How could you get rid of a thing like that? I had a public image limited lollipop. No. But it melted in the attic and got into all the records. It was oh, just well, there you I'm still regret throwing it away. If it's causing you trouble. So I've got a Led Zeppelin, Zeppelin to blow up. That came. That was actually from the promo of uh, the DVD. Oh, they are, uh, yeah, the West so, Nice. Yeah, I, I, I imagine that probably has perished somehow now, because they will, won't they? So yeah, it's don't, don't us, attempt yeah. a long journey in there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 don't try and cross the channel. A, a safety record was never good at the best of yeah. them. So, um, anyone up for some King Crimson merchandise? Oh, go on, go on. Okay. So, my friend Jacko, who's um, in the band uh, right now, he fiendishly gave me the Cr King Crimson Rubik's Cube. It's got oh, gosh. Hmm. And he, and he, and he uh, especially Fabulous. sort of zhuzhed it up for me, and I, can, I can't solve it. I've done, taken it all around the prog office. Everyone's had their hands on it, obviously pre-pandemic. Pre and, uh, no, it's just important. It's, I mean, Rubik's Cube's pretty hard anyway, but with this the elements of uh sort of uh lark's tongues it's got them as the, the elements here it's got um uh the first album all that sorts must of be the kind of thing that if you had it's a look huge, on it, if you had a look on ebay that must be worth something because it, king crimson will have the kind of fans who would love a thing like that it did have, so these i think were for sale you for must have looked bit. surely you must have been tempted <laughs> I don't think that I think that they were for sale for a bit, but look how big it is. I'm not. A t it's not like I'm a tiny person. This is all absolutely enormous. Yeah. You know that's. You know I could I can stand on that and see over next door's fence. Um, <laughs> and then frisbees. Frisbees were were a little thing. So oh, I've, yes. got two, I've got opposing uh, forces here with an anthrax frisbee. Right. Brilliant. Get in. But also Fairport Convention frisbee. Oh uh, what? Perfect. That's how With the island you? label on that's lovely. Meet on the ledge. Meet on the ledge. That's brilliant. That's great. That's really The good. thing is, I go to Cropperty Convention and there's a little uh, stall at the top that sells branded Fairport stuff and they have some really cute ideas. And this is a very cute idea. But then when I saw Fairport recently, about two years ago, again at Union Chapel, because they do a winter tour and they always play there, they had, because they're old people, they thought this would be funny and I thought it was funny. They got an oh. eye test. <laughs> Fiver. That's good. It's good, isn't it? I love. I love the idea that. Um, yeah. That is how the world's changed. You said I saw it recently, two years ago. You know. Yeah, I know. Back in the day, I know. It, it feels like changed, changed lineup about five times in. Feels like years. the year's been on hold. So last year I went to the Zappa hologram uh, show. Oh, Do you right, know right. about that? Go on. Yeah. So is that so? Um, there's a company that is that done... with Dweezil Zappa? No, no, because the oh, family right. had, no, the, the yeah, family they've... had a bit of a, mm, the family mm. kind of 
not getting on at the moment. So I've got right. a, uh, there's a there's a Uber fan called Jeff who um, has raised the money to uh, use footage of, of Zappa and create a, a hologram and then put a band around it. So you've got a live band and you've got the hologram uh, on on the stage at the, at the same time. This is at the uh, Palladium, London Palladium, and uh, you know went along, didn't know what to expect, but actually really really enjoyed it. It wasn't quite the right venue for it because because it's tiered. There's certain points where people can only see different bits of it yeah. uh, and I, but I did see Carl Palmer there and Carl Palmer was there because he's looking into doing hologram ELP oh, at really? some point yeah which uh, that will be on hold for the moment obviously once we sort everything else out but um so he's yeah, going to play with the other two who are the other two both the other two are dead aren't they yeah that's right yeah so wow. he can play but the others come in because there's enough footage of to to uh have them you know sort of at doing their thing you see around, around him. this is sorry you're on one of our favorite subjects here you know because i you know ever since i saw a bus in golders green only about 10 years ago that said on the side of it the glenn miller band on tour i thought that's the future <laughs> That's you the know, future. These bands are not going to stop. I know. Well, we well, well, Nancy apparently... Sinatra invent this. Wasn't Nancy Sinatra did a thing with Frank, didn't she? They did a duet in, in Hologram. I think she was one of the very first people to do it. One of the first people was when they brought Tupac back. All uh, oh, right. That, there was a projection of, of Tupac. Uh, but they've done big band stuff. They've done um, Roy Orbison's really big Hologram event. Uh, Glenn Gould, they're going to do Glenn Gould as well. Oh, piano. Um, yeah, grunts and all. Yes. Uh, but yeah, at the, at the, uh, at the Zappa show, they have a squeezy Zappa hot dog. So I got that. <laughs> now I took a photo of this, put it on Instagram, and they thought it was something naughty, so they took it down. <laughs> oh, there's a museum w w waiting here. Yes. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, this now, is absolutely there's an invaluable. idea, Jack. You that's should open it. I mean, it's just, show you who else would have this? Ziltoid Puppet as well. Ziltoid, the omniscient. There's um, an artist called Devin Townsend. He's a, he's a sort of uh, fantastically talented metal artist, but he's got demons that he wrestles with. And one of the demons is he's got an alter ego, uh, which is an alien that wants to take over the world called Ziltoid. And yeah, cool. It's a puppet, 20 quid. Anyway, so there's that. <laughs> um, and then going back to Sparks, I've got my Sparks beret, which I oh, love. Oh. So, you know, I've done that. But my pièce de résistance... And Danny Kelly will be so annoyed that I'm showing this because his he had one and it got broken in his move. It's the Gong Camembert electric oh, oh cheese yes. plate. Is there is there a what plate? Cheese plate. It's a actual cheese plate. Oh, that cool. is brilliant. That's so good. You know he you know when he moved to Ireland he had it packed yes. and it yeah. got dropped. So he, he, and it's not and they aren't anymore. They're not going to make anymore. <laughs> That is really so, good. Joe. We, tradi we traditionally ask people to climax these um, little presentations with your opportunity to tell the world what is the greatest record ever made and to show them it. It can be a single, it can be an LP, it can be anything you like. Has anyone what is it? Pinky and Perky yet? No, I can tell you about Pinky and Perky, but go on. Go on. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I did. This is my initial choice. Right. So nice. Which, Buzz, which Buzzcocks record is that? Singles going steady. Oh, it's a kind of best of, isn't it? Oh, yeah. 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 Right. It just makes the most, That's good. The right. most fantastic album. Right. But I think this is a really, really early love of mine, and it's... Oh, oh well, that's a great go. record. The first Anyone pick thing... Piper yet? And yeah, nobody's, nobody's picked Piper at the Gates of Dawn yet. No, that's no. a brilliant record. No. Yeah, so I'd be about 15 when I got this from Woolworths in Blackfen. And, uh, you know, it was life-changing, really life-changing, everyone says that. But, you know, I hadn't heard music like this before. There have been elements of it with the Beatles stuff being a bit kind of quirky and whim whimsical, you know, um, Sergeant Pepper and stuff like that. But this was the, you know, this is the real deal. And um, there's such a, I don't know, when you're a young person, I think you can really identify with, with Sid. And the, the you know the ch child well maybe leaving childhood not wanting to you know yeah, so this yeah. is an album I think that's a, that's about that for me but really be beautiful stuff on there and really funny stuff bike when I first said bike you know I just 
beside myself. This is hilarious, but also scary because those always, at the end. That was always my favourite, the Pink Floyd. I've got a bike, you can ride it if you like. Oh, yeah. This it's is great. Great. That brilliant, whimsical Lewis Carroll going back to childhood. It sounds like Ian Dury. It sounds yeah, like yeah. new boots and panties. Yeah. They, yeah. Kind of, yeah, yeah. People sound effects, you know, like this for me as well. I mean, when I bought this, this is only not had even been out. This has been out. No, not even been out twenty years yet. Probably been out about eighteen years. But it sounded like a time capsule. I was going back in time, and I really liked sixties things when I was was younger. Anyway, so and it still sounds like that. I travel back. I travel back to the to the to the studio or to the to sixties London or whatever. And it's just really, you know, it's one it's a it's one of those records that transports you. It really does. But you might see something a little bit weird about this. Can you spot what? Well, happening? someone's drawn spectacles on yeah, the face. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to bring this up because I don't remember them on the original. <laughs> Do you regret that? Again, this is no. Again, this is totally unique, and it's again of its of its time because it's. I've stood on it, I've thrown it around, I've got my fingers all over it because I've loved it so much. But when I lived in another flat in Finsley Park, I lived with a, uh, my flatmate Louise, who was a bit of a card. And one, and we would have themed weeks. And one week it was Science Week, and for some reason we we're playing Pink Floyd all the time and wearing really wearing glasses without without lenses in and lab coats. And um, so we just thought, oh, we'll give them, but they're supposed to be scientists here. <laughs> What the hell? I've never taken any drugs. I don't need drugs. I've got this album. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, it's been it's That's been fantastic. A, it's been a delight talking to you. Really Thank great. Thank you for asking me on. Really it's really great. entertaining. Uh, and uh, you know, I really think you should think about interesting the VNA in an exhibition of your uh, of your merchandise. You know, valuable <laughs> cultural artifacts or kind of zany old toot or whatever you want to call it. I'll go for zany old toot. Um, the, the Zot collection. Right. Yes. <laughs> Three more albums from then. I've yeah. got a lot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, got a lot of Zot, so we're, thank we're you look, much, We look forward to seeing you in, in uh, probably over a pint of lager at some point. Brilliant. When this bloody war is over. Joe's yeah, been absolutely. Lovely. Absolutely. Yes. Thanks so Thank much, Brilliant. Brilliant. Very, very funny. Bye.